Hey everyone, this is Nitro. In this part 3 video of interesting Apex Arena matches in Season 3, I'm gonna go over 4 more battles. And the first one I'll cover is a battle where I faced off against Rainforest, because I've always thought that Rainforest was a terrible character. But this battle, Rainforest demolished me. So I clearly need to learn more about Rainforest. Uh, another character that I completely neglected but this battle showed that Rainforce can work. So let's begin. So, the opponent box is very um, odd. There's a bunch of older non-meta characters in this box. For example, you know, there's Vargas instead of Juggler, as an example. Another example would be that there's Varna here, who is really considered to be obsolete in general. And of course, there's Lanford as well. So there's three characters right there that are pretty much off meta. Nonetheless, I lost, so we'll begin. And I begin by banning the enemy Liana because I think I've identified that there were only three healers yet again. So Liana, Chloe, and Wilder were the healers for Kata. And my Zerida is banned while the enemy plays Landius. And I only know now that this Landius was Lancer class. <laughs> you don't get to see it while you're picking or uh, you're pick banning the characters, right? But now that I'm reviewing the match, I can see that the enemy has a Lancer Landius. In any case though. So I start, I've banned all three healers of my opponent now. And I play my own Landius. I now lose Listel and Shafinio, and the enemy plays Rachel. So I ban the enemy Zerda and Listel, and I play Elwyn. I actually kind of question that choice now. You know, I had so many options that, you know, Bozal. Omega, you know, didn't have to, Luna even. I'm kind of surprised you. I pricked Elwyn here, but it could have just been force of habit. Like I've been playing Elwyn and Yulia consistently for multiple matches, so I think maybe I just did that again. In any case, though, and he gets to ban my Yulia and my Luna as a result, right? And they play Shafaniel. So, enemy, I ban the enemy Yulia and Luna now and play Iris in pla I guess I was planning to teleport uh, Elwyn forward to take out the enemy Lindius in one shot. So I get my Bozal and Leonhard banned and the opponent plays Rainforce. So I ban the enemy Bozal and Varna, AoE attackers, right? And play Omega. And then finally I lose both Tieris and Liana and the enemy plays Vargas, double tank, right? So I thought that having Omega to be able to ignore guard would really help. And finally, I had a choice between Juggler and Wilder. And after some thought, I think I decided to play Juggler because I felt that Juggler could help protect me against the AoE attacks of Rainforce. I think that was the reason I chose uh, Juggler. But once again, I don't understand Rainforce, and it definitely uh, cost me. So let's take a look at Rainforce. Okay. First of all, okay. each time you do damage to the enemy, you gain Otherworldly Force, where all stats except for hit points uh, increase by, I guess, 4%. And this can stack up to 7 times. So the more damage he deals to enemies, the higher damage he can deal in general. And then after taking action, if you have 7 stacks of Otherworldly Force, you get 1 extra action. And then after taking this action, you're teleported next to the nearest ally and all the Otherworldly Force effects are removed from you. So in addition to that, the skills he has, and I really should have spent time reading them, but I didn't. There's a Eclipse, Teleport, to the skill casting location, then deal 0.3 times AoE damage to enemies within a 2 block radius, and then steals one buff from them. And if you land a critical hit, you apply an extra strong debuff. There is of course the Sonic Blade, a straight line attack, 
which doesn't deal much damage, 0.18 times AoE, but it hits multiple targets, and if you land a critical hit, right, the skill cooldown is reduced by 1. So that can allow Sonic Blade can be used pretty consistently if uh, you hit multiple targets and so on. And finally, Star Stab, right? Attacks all enemies in a straight line. This one deals normal damage, 0.33 times AoE damage. And when attacking, teleport to the furthest point in the skill's casting radius. In addition, if this attack hits two or more enemies, the skill randomly swaps the position of enemies hit. So a whole bunch of different skills with, I guess, you know, random teleportation effects and the Eclipse, which does uh, teleport you to other locations, stuff like that. In any case though, let's begin. So, he has two tanks to protect himself against my own, right? making it hard for me to attack in general. And initially, I just try to push him aggressively because I know I have both Elwyn and Omega, and also a teleportation from Iris. So the thing is, as well as I looked at this and I realized that my he doesn't have that much skill increases either. Like the only one that I can't target is Rainforce, but Shafaniel, for example, has 171 skill. You know, Rachel has 196. The, you know, Vargas and Landius both have low skill, but they do have extremely high defense, so they're not really targets that I can strike. But despite that, you know, there's lots of opportunity for me to attack. Is what I saw. So he uses Sonic Blade. It did crit. And thus, he gets to use it again next turn. So right now, clearly, he's hovering back because he needs to keep his, well, Rachel alive, right? So in some ways, I probably should not have pushed in so aggressively, looking at this now. I should have let the map get smaller, then Omega would have no problem attacking, kind of thing. But regardless, I move in and start attacking. And he launches another Sonic Blade. No. It continues to stack otherworldly force buffs. And here, he actually chooses to have him sanction from extreme range on my Omega. So I kinda send my Elwyn charging forward with Sword Soul, and it doesn't do enough damage to one shot this character. Right? No real surprise, because it's Lancer class against Lancer class. I thought it would do enough damage actually, but this Vargas, 1128 defense absolutely massive, absolutely monstrous amount of defense. So that's why it worked out for him. Continuing on, he now moves up and uses Runic Void. And my Omega actually survives that. So I send Landius forward to attack Rainforce, but actually, shockingly, Rainforce has enough hit points to survive. I think that, let me just go back to the previous step. I think. I'm actually not sure how this Rainforce survived the attack from my Landius, to be honest. Um, could have been that some of the Royal Cavalry were dead, so I didn't have enough strikes on this Rainforce. The other aspect is maybe just Land. I thought that Landius, as a Cavalry hero, doing additional damage to Rainforce would be able to one-shot him, and it didn't. So that was probably the losing maneuver in truth since Rainforce survived with 35.06 hit points. And thus, he gets to use Eclipse, kills off my Omega, right? Gets to act again, and then the Star Stab wipes out my Elwyn, ending the fight. Basically. So... There. With that, I lost both of my attackers. 
because Rainforce survived my Landius attack. So it just shows, I mean, Rainforce killing Elwyn, probably not too big of a surprise because after all Rainforce is infantry against the Lancer class, but uh, and then of course Omega was also damaged beforehand, which is why they were both killable. But yeah. So I did, I try to have Master of Ice take out these enemies, but once again, Master of Ice is physical damage. These enemies have extremely high defense, right? Rainforce and Vargas. Plus, Master of Ice did basically no damage to them, and plus, they all lived, which totally over at this point. So, this is completely a battle that was lost because I have no understanding of <laughs> Rainforce. Mind you, he played this very well too. So, there we have it. But even now, I have to admit, I am still surprised that Rainforest survived that attack from Landius. Um, so, what can I say? <laughs> Rainforce was able to beast mode me in that battle. So, next, then we'll go into a battle where I lost against Narm. Okay. Another off meta box, which surprised me. And this off meta box, you'll find that consistently I tend to lose my matches against unexpected things. And this opponent's off meta box is. He only has one tank, let it. Okay. Other than that, healer-wise, he has three. Liana, Iris, and Tieris. And that's it. So the off-meta characters would be Varna and Narm, you know, because they're mostly considered obsolete now. But uh, basically, a super aggressive team. And so I used my usual strategies to ban healers initially. And I play Landius. Right. So he bans my Omega and Listel after banning Zerida and plays Yulia. So I ban the remaining two healers and play Shafanio. This was probably the mistake. The big mistake in the pick ban phase. Yeah. So my opponent then plays or bans Wilder and Liana, playing Elwyn. And I just ban the Listel and let in and play my Tiaris. Probably should not have banned let in, looking at this now. But regardless, he bans my Yulia and Bozel. Playing Bozel. And I ban the Luna and Lena. Playing my Luna now. So I have Shafinio to buff up Luna. This is not a bad combo at all. Finally, he bans my Juggler and Leonhard, leaving me the choice between Iris and Elwyn. Right? I ban the Cl Matthew and Varna now, and I chose to play Iris for two healers rather than Elwyn. Probably the other fatal mistake, actually, looking at this now. And then the opponent plays Narm. Right? My initial thought there was that I would use Iris to teleport Luna forward to attack. Then Luna would attack and retreat back, right? but I actually didn't play that out. So that was a mistake on my part. And we'll see me move sh initially shift forward here like this, like so. So I start buffing up my Luna in preparation for my planned attack. Right? That's why I moved her first. Because the reason to move her first is that way, for example, I can then teleport her forward, like so, right? Have her move up, attack, and then retreat. The problem here though was my Sky Devourer positioned himself in a way where my Luna can't, couldn't really be teleported forward to attack appropriately. Right? He shifted Bozo up. And I, so in some ways you can say I mispositioned, right? 
by positioning in the south like this instead of in the north. So continuing on, Narn gets to use Sprint here, allowing all his characters to move an additional tile. So I start shifting Landius forward a bit. My plan here was to have Luna be able to retreat back into a guard position. That's why I did that. I exposed my Landius to Leon's attack. But that I didn't mind that, that was more or less intended. And Blue Dragon Strike shifts my positions, which didn't really help him all that much in truth. In fact, it pushed me back. So now he got to Black Hole, and this is where I got screwed. Because Black Hole applied four debuffs on Luna and silenced her. And that's what actually that's actually what lost me the match. Because now I could not have Luna attack anymore. So I had to move Luna back, she was useless. So instead of being able to kill off a target just now, I had to move Luna back. So here I try to weaken all these enemies and I toss out the Heaven Sanction to do so. Right. The other thing is, let me just pause this quickly. Landius actually got massively debuffed, cannot use passive skills and cannot use active skills. So now, we'll see what happens, but Yulia charges forward, uses Godly Menace, and one-shots my Landius. So I actually, looking at this now, I actually lost to Bozo. I thought I had lost to Narm, but it wasn't Narm that defeated me. Well, Narm certainly helped with the sprint. Right, giving Bozo plus one mobility to move in to AoE. But what really crushed me was Bozo's black hole. Right. So, disabling Landius' revival, silencing Luna, that instantly lost me the match. So actually, this was not as interesting as I thought it would be. <laughs> Looking at this now, I just made some really fatal mistakes. So, but more power to him for getting the correct pick ban against me. That was the second battle, actually not as interesting as I thought it would be. So the third battle then was... <laughs> this is actually kind of funny. Uh, I should not have won this one, but I did. And it's because of what happened with Hiei. So... The enemy has a, once again, a very a much more recent Apex box with Yusuke and Hiei in the party, and the other characters are all pretty much metal characters. I ban Zerida, he ban Zerida, he picks Landius. Very standard pick so far. I ban Listel and Bozel, you know, <laughs> and play my own Landius. He bans my Listel and Luna plays Hiei. So I ban Yusuke and Luna and play Elwyn. And he bans my Yulia and Omega. I continue to pick Elwyn second. I'm really questioning that choice over and over again, regardless. He plays Juggler now. So two tanks, double tank with Hiei. So I could just continue blanding his damage dealers, this time Rachel and Lana and I play Juggler as well. So double tank on both sides. He now bends my Bozel and Leonhard and plays Iris to teleport forward. So I just ban Liana and Tieris here. My thought there was to prevent attack blessing on Hiei, right? And to prevent act again. So he has the choice between Waller and Leon. I, I'm pretty certain he's gonna bring Leon. And I choose to play Tieris. And finally, I lose my Shafaniel and Iris here, while he plays Leon as expected, and I have the choice between Wilder and Liana, I choose to bring Liana for Act Again, of course. So both sides pretty much have a single damage dealer. He has Hiei, I have Elwyn. Right? But of course, given that I just need to survive and so on, I chose to actually have Juggler be an aggressive one, bringing B-Shock because I felt that the one-shot capability could be useful. 
and not much else to say. Let's begin. So the initial turn, as usual, is just shifting forward. A bit. I know he has the iris for teleporting forward, so no, I had to be wary of that. But even if I hang back, he can still teleport anyways. So there was no real reason to hang back. Plus, I start moving. And it's surprising that he's the one that's hanging back a bit, right? So I start with the attack blessing on Elwyn. My only damage dealer, so of course I'm going to attack blessing. And then I begin moving Juggler up. And then I shift Grandius down, which was actually a bit of a mistake. He moves first, he moves CA up, I shift Elwyn forward, and then the mistake shows up where Leon actually has enough movement to chivalry and blue dragon strike me. So I did not put my Landius in the correct position, allowing that to happen. And as a result, he could randomly teleport me, but you know, the random teleport wasn't too bad. Right? At least he didn't get much out of this Leon uh, Blue Dragon Strike. So I thought this was still okay, and what he does is have Hie, use Dragon of Darkness Flame, act again, and then attacks my Elwyn. And Elwyn dies. So that was actually a mistake on my part. I thought incorrectly that Elwyn would have enough uh, strength to tank the two hits from Hie, but he didn't. Yeah. The AoE followed by the single target strike was able to kill off my Elwyn, despite the fact that he had Miracle buff and so on. So clearly my defense was not enough to tank Ace hits. So lesson learned there. Regardless, battle continues. So I'm just going to I acted again my juggler. So that I could have him charge forward to be shock the enemy Leon. The act again was probably a waste. But regardless. Yeah. Here and now, juggler tanks the first hit from Hiei, gets debuffed with uh, Evil Fire and the healing reversal, and then has to tank a second hit, but this second hit no longer has skills. So he tanks that one just fine. Right. So I, looking at this now, I think the reason Elwyn died may have been because of 1.2 times damage and the dispel of buffs. The combination of those two. Because the AoE damage wasn't that high, I felt. But uh, so, regardless, Elwyn died. You know, I'm going to have to look into maybe building up my Elwyn for, further for more defense. And now, looking at things, well, my juggler is massively debuffed right now. So, what I do is I just run him away. And he was able to retreat out of range. I move Landius back, which is guarding Juggler, right? Juggler now has no skills, no great Triton, no great Jerkin Barrier, so he's not guarding anyone. So that, and so I just need to protect him from getting attacked right now. Due to the terrain, like the mountains and so on, that's easily possible. And I just do that by moving Liana here. Now, the only character who could have attacked my Juggler, the enemy Juggler, can no longer do so. So continuing on, I just have my Landius attack their Landius because he had nothing else to do, frankly. <laughs> and I have Yenna activate Prayer now to heal up Juggler after he ended his turn. So the debuffs were gone. And I healed him to full. So. 
opponent continues to act. In this case, activating the faction buff, and I try to nap. Kie uses his ignore guard skill to attack my Liana, but it's no issue because Liana has Shrine Maidens, right? So she wasn't killed. So I shift her up, staying in guard range, right? And I choose to start healing up my Liana, and also Sage's Hat healing like everybody. Finally, start adding faction buffs. So I have no attacker anymore. He has he. Ate. My goal is to survive all 12 turns. His goal is to kill me, basically. And there he used Beast Shock, but it didn't kill anyone. So, and, you know, Juggler is in a position to guard everyone enemies. So it's perfectly okay to With Beast Shock, Langius can't move, so I just end his turn like so. And I have Juggler now, activate his Great Dragon Barrier. And then tank a hit from here. So that one didn't surprise me. He had... He used Hiei's skill that causes, uh, you know, that causes healing to be turned into damage. And he used this while Dragon of Darkness Flame was not yet up. So he was able to heal reverse only, but because Dragon of Darkness Flame was not up, Hie got that debuff on himself as well. Right? So now he's getting his healing converted into damage and all that stuff too. So I have Liana act again, my juggler, and I just run him away because I need to try to get him to heal up. And here, he has Hiei use his Dragon of Darkness Flame and kill himself! That actually made me laugh. Because he had that heal reversal thing, right? So when he used Dragon of Darkness Flame to do damage and so on, he kept taking... He took damage from the Iris' lovely heart talent. And, you know, using those skills also deals self-damage. So the two damage... Uh, two AoE damages killed off his Hiei. And then I move Tiaris this way to once again protect my juggler. So r once more, my juggler, who I had retreated back, is safe and cannot be attacked. So I act first with juggler to remove that debuff, the healing one. And then I have, now that uh, beast shock is gone, I can start moving my characters around to heal up. And at this point, you know, he had no way of killing me now. Four against three, so he retreats. So, definitely a mistake on his part to use that attack skill uh, before he had his, his transformation skill available. If he had been patient, waited a bit, a few more turns before using that skill, it might have been a different battle. You know. So there we go. A very uh, interesting match, lost because I guess of my opponent's mistake. So the final battle in this video will be my battle against Logic, where I actually won on the very final turn, turn 12. So, opponent's box is a pretty meta box as well. well Yusuke, Hiei, once again, you know, Zerda, and so on. So it's a, it's a solid box. It's, you cannot complain about, you know, it being weak or anything like that. Probably be better box than mine in truth. I lose my Zerida, ban the enemy's Liana because 
for whatever reason, I continue to find that a lot of people are running 3 healers instead of 4. So I ban the enemy healer, play my Landius, right? Enemy bans my Luna and Listel after Zerida, they play Juggler, so I ban the remaining healers. Right? So this, once again, enemy has no healers. And I play Elwyn. Next, Yulia and Bozel get banned. Enemy plays Yulia. I ban the enemy Luna and Elwyn, and play Shafaniel. I'm still following this trend of <laughs> Landius, Shafaniel, Elwyn. Not sure why. I think I'll try to change that up a bit. Yeah. In any case, though, enemy now bans my Omega and, Burn and Leonhard, and plays Zerida. Uh oh. So I banned Hiei and Omega. Two of the other assassins and play my juggler. He now bans my Liana and Iris, leaving me Tiaris and Wilder, and chooses to play Bozel. So there is a Bloodthirster Zerida combo here in this fight. And finally, I just get rid of Lestel and Landius, and I choose to play Tiaris as my soul healer. Enemy drops down Leon. You know, I'm seeing a lot of Leons, and I'm not being... I don't think the Leons are working out for my opponents in general. In any case though, here we go. So I'm player 1, he's player 2. I initially just move forward very aggressively with Landius. Right? I need to close the distance if I'm to have Elwyn attack, basically. So, Shafania moves up. Fashion buffs. Especially since I'm not quite sure how far I can, I'm not really sure I can avoid this Zerida, to be honest. Right? So I'm just pushing forward with characters I know who can actually who can definitely survive against Zerida. So I move Elwyn forward, but keep him outside of Zerida's range. And Bozel moves up. I move Up with Juggler, and I choose to Miracle Up, which is probably a mistake, but I did it. So I start here with a Heaven Sanction from my Shafaniel, targeted solely at Yulia. So Yulia is actually shockingly vulnerable to it getting weakened, because she doesn't have high defense or magic defense like other characters do, right? So just like that, you see, Yulia is below half health. And thus, I was staying out of range due to it being heaven sanctioned, and thus he has to retreat that Yulia. So I just hover back as well, because he has no actual healer, so any damage I do is permanent unless I let myself get into Yulia's attack range. Mostly sitting back, but staying out of Yulia's range. Here, I did expose myself to Bozo's black hole. Um, I felt it was worth taking the hits and taking the risk because I noticed that he doesn't have seal. Right. So as a result, only one character got silenced, which was Juggler. Everyone else has a few debuffs, but they're not silenced. You know, Landius, though, unfortunately, God cannot heal yourself. And because he got that debuff, the enemy charges forward with his Leon, with Blue Dragon Strike, right? To randomly swap my positions. So, I reply with tossing out a Demolish to remove some buffs from the enemy. And here. I have Tiaris launch a range attack because I knew that Holy Flash could reduce this juggler's mobility and render him unable to guard because he has no skill increase. So this juggler I knew did not have an Overlord's badge. Even if it had skill increase, it's very it was more likely for it to have a Swordsmith Medal than an Overlord's badge. So I took full advantage there. 
reduce the mobility of this juggler. Now I can't guard, and it, I'm continuing to control what my opponent can do, more or less. So Zerda comes charging in, strikes a killing blow against my Landius who can't heal, although he takes a lot of damage. And here, after some thoughts, I choose to kill the enemy Leon first rather than the enemy Zerda. It was a choice of one or the other, but I felt that the enemy Leon was a bigger threat because I, I knew Shafanio could range attack and finish off the enemy Zerda. So, now he gets to charge in with Yulia, using Godly Menace to heal Yulia up and wipes out my... Um, sorry. Wipes out my Landius. So here, I reply by having Elwyn Sword Soul, the enemy... Um, enemy juggler and that was actually a mistake because this juggler has blood pact so he's immune to cannot be healed effects i should have known that just from the sheer amount of hit points that juggler has and of course not having skill if you don't have an older batch or swordsman medal pretty much you're guaranteed to have blood pact so i should have known that but the thing was my Elwyn was reduced to zero mobility due to Yulia's Godly Menace, so I had no choice but to attack. But the only thing was, I probably should have saved the Sword Soul. Regardless, the attack was done, you know, Juggler was weakened but not killed. And he gets to toss an Earthquake on my characters, like so, weakening them. I, at this point, choose to heal up Juggler and then move Juggler up to Great Dragon Barrier to try to guard my characters. Of course, before that, because of where I moved up, I also can't guard due to Godly Menace, so he gets to kill off my Elwyn, rendering it down to a 3v3. But now Juggler can guard my characters, so it's okay overall. And the thing here is, my opponent does not have Beast Shock. He chose to bring his the faction buff, so it's a slight advantage for me in that sense. In the meantime, I'm starting to use Demolish to weaken the enemies. In this case, Demolish removed Juggler's ability to guard at 2 range although he remains in water. So that was unfortunate. Bozo chooses to attack my juggler, right? Doesn't do much. So now I have juggler choose to be shock this Bozo, who is outside the guard range of the enemy juggler. Yulia tries to attack juggler, I mean because he can't move Yulia, right? Beast Shock reduced the mobility of Yulia to 1. So in the meantime, faction buff and heal kind of situation. So it's back to 3v2. Yulia is just a monster in terms of healing, right? So it's just healing like crazy, making it a real struggle for me to kill. I just continue to have my Shafaniel toss out Demolishes to try to remove buffs. And here I have Juggler get attacked by my Tiaris and mobility reduce this Juggler. Unfortunately, I thought that would give me an opportunity to kill Juggler, but nope. <laughs> but nonetheless, this Juggler is reduced down to one movement, and this is where Logic made a fatal mistake. Instead of moving this Yulia all the way to this safe position, 
Actually, there was no mistake. Even if he moved to this position, I could have moved my character into here. So yeah, so you he had no choice. He moved Yulia in to attack my Tiaris, and I just moved Juggler in to try to nap. And he follows up with a Great Dragon Barrier. Remember, he can only move one tile due to Tiaris's goddess's left hand. So he just moves down one tile and activates a skill. Meanwhile, I just toss out the Heaven Sanction, do some damage to them, although I know that juggler will heal Yulia a bit. And I have Tiaris self-heal, because I know Yulia is going to attack my Tiaris. But instead, Yulia chose to attack Shepanio, which surprised me. So I get to activate Great Dragon Barrier, and the thing here is, because of my position characters, Juggler is now trapped in poison. So Goddess's left hand won me this fight. Right? Now because this Juggler can't get into a safe tile, so he's dead. So, juggler tries to attack, does nothing to my Juggler, and disappears. So now it's just three characters against Yulia. I thought that it's turn nine. I thought it would be basically over at this point, right? So, and I start stacking attack blessing and all that stuff on Shafinio to attack. But he had Godly Menace once again. So Godly Menace reduced my mobility to nothing and I can't move. And if I attack right now, I take fixed damage from Yulia. So instead of attacking, I chose to try to wait it out. And Shafanio actually managed to tank this hit from Yulia. Even though the Shrine Maidens were not at full health, right? I actually ran... Uh, I ran, I think, what's it called? The item that gives immunity to fixed damage on Shafinio. So she didn't take any fixed damage, and as a result, this Yulia who doesn't have a faction buff could not do enough damage to one-shot this Shafinio. So she lived. Bonus. And as a result, I get to come out on top. This was actually closer than I expected. If my if my Shafina had died there, I wouldn't have enough damage to kill this Yulia. Right? Not with her constantly healing up to full health like this, with Heaven Sanction and all that stuff. But now that Godly Menace has worn off, I have Tiaris attack. Yulia. And now that Yulia is at 51 12 hit points, actually, even if Shafino died, I think Juggler could have finished this fight. Right? Against this severely damaged Yulia with no soldiers. So, but regardless, I have Shafino attack Yulia and finish it off. Just like that. So, absolutely key to this fight was Tiaris' gear. And specifically, Tiaris having the goddess left hand. If not for that, I would not have been able to kill off the enemy juggler, right? And if the enemy juggler didn't die, there, I would have never been able to attack Yulia. So that was a victory due to Tiaris having goddess left hand. So in some ways, you know, an overlord badge on juggler may be worth considering because it grants that immunity to mobility reduction. You know, most people currently run the Swordsmith Medal if they have it, right? Because it get, grants immunity to both silence and fixed damage, but Overlord's Badge can also save you. So I just wanted to mention that one. So that was a very interesting battle overall. You know, I'm realizing that Yulia is truly, truly, truly difficult to deal with. Um, 
but I am getting a lot of practice fighting against her because I'm kind of choosing not to ban her to get this practice. And there we have it. So thanks for watching everyone. I hope you found this video useful to you uh, or interesting. And on that note, Nitro out. <laughs>